Hey folks, Edder from Brain Pulp TV, and I'm coming at you with some new content here for the channel, Magic Arena. Now, I recently got into the beta for Magic Arena. First of all, let's let's jump back. For those of you unfamiliar with what Magic Arena is, it is a new online computerized version of playing Magic the Gathering. Now, most of you have probably heard of or tried Magic the Gathering online, or BitGo, or however you want to phrase it. And if you have, you know that that's been good in the sense that it, it encompasses pretty much all the cards in Magic's history, and it supports a wide variety of play types and, and deck types and stuff. Um, drafts, Constructed, Popper, Commander, so on and so forth. However, it has been plagued with a lot of issues over the years. Pretty much since it launched, it's... There have been obviously some changes since it, since it launched, but as someone who sort of got back into Magic through Magic Online when it first launched, and then went away from Magic and came back to it, I was horrified to see how little the Magic Online platform has improved from the time when it started up till now. It still looks bad. For the most part, I, I find it to be very, very bad. The user interface is still pretty awful. It's not the most um, new player friendly format that you could possibly have when it comes to Magic Gathering. So I believe also because of other games like Hearthstone, other card uh, online card games, Hearthstone, Eternal, um, games that have some beautiful, beautiful interfaces and looks to them and feels to them when you're playing. I think Magic or Wizards finally felt pressured possibly to, and thankfully so, to reinvent how they present their game online and magic arena seems to be exactly that now as i was saying before i just recently got accepted into the beta for magic arenas that was just last week i would have come up with a video last week i was swamped with work unfortunately it seems like every time i get invited into a beta for any sort of game it happens at the exact moment where i'm just flooded with work so luckily i was able to sort of play around with it a bit and uh, now I'm finally able to sit down and do a more complete video. There's certain things in this in this game, in Magic Arena, that I haven't even touched yet because I wanted to wait till I was on camera so I could show you guys and we could experience it together for the first time. But I have done certain things, so I'm going to sort of walk you through what I know, and then we're going to open up some packs, which is something I've never done uh, yet in Magic Arena, which is one of the things I was going to say for you guys. And then at the very end, I'll just go through one game quickly and you guys can see sort of the gameplay as well too. Okay, so first and foremost, this is pretty much the opening screen. As you can see down here, uh, there are basically what are, are essentially quests. So cast 20 white or red spells, cast 30 green, red or green spells, um, kill 15 of your opponent's creatures, and then there's a bonus for a win if you like win one of the games. And then you also get packs as well too. So every five, 10 and 15 wins, you're gonna get a pack. So these reset, I believe once a week. I, I think certain ones are daily. I'm not entirely sure. Once again, I haven't been playing it much, but I did go through all of these the first week that I was in the beta and I was able to gather up like, you know, a few extra packs and a bunch of gold, as you can see up here, uh, earn gold by winning games and completing objectives. So they call them objectives, not quests, sorry. So this is one of the things which is good because it sort of pushes players to, or prompts players, I should say, not pushes, that sounds too pushy, um, prompts players to try different sort of decks and stuff. Like, for example, I'm, I'm more of a, a white-blue player. So uh, these quests that have white or blue cards involve them I'm going to complete those quite easily, but I'm not usually, I don't usually play a lot of red, I don't usually play a lot of green. So some of these other ones, uh, I might not have tested out decks in those colors if it wasn't for these little objectives sort of prompting me to try and do so. So this is an interesting thing because it, it, it creates a sort of uh, self-sustaining economy. You're gonna be able to gain gold. Gold can then be used for various things in, um, in the game, such as buying packs, or entering certain events. Speaking of which, when it comes to the types of play and events, you have regular constructed play here. And this includes rank constructed. Now, this is my current rank, which is uh, bronze tier four. The rankings seem to have no real impact in the game right now, probably because it's, it's, it's closed beta. So there's not a huge number of people uh, in comparison to an open beta playing. So I get ranked up against, or I get uh, pitted against players of a ridiculously higher rank 
like gold and I don't know if there's platinum or whatever like that, but I've seen so many different symbols. I don't usually get um, placed against other people of bronze tier. So I don't think the, the rankings and the tiers really affect who you're going to be matched up against. I think right now it's just sort of a free-for-all. There's also certain uh, events. There's a flash event right now, which is interesting. So you can play in flash events. Uh, these are, let's just click it here and see. So get a Dominaria booster just for entering this event. Bring your constructed deck and battle opponents and earn bonus rewards with enough wins. Keep playing with that deck until you reach three wins or two losses. So it's sort of a mini, um, well, not to compare it to Hearthstone, but I'm going to compare it to Hearthstone. It's sort of a mini arena. So this is uh, your reward for one win or for zero wins. And okay, so your reward for zero wins and one win is basically the same. You get a single pack. And then for two wins, you're going to get a pack and a bonus reward. It looks like gold. And then finally, you're going to get uh, two bonus rewards as well as a pack if you do get three wins. Now, in order to enter this, it's going to cost you a thousand gold, which we, you know, have three thousand now. So we could do this or two hundred gems. I'll talk about gems a little later on, but let's quickly jump back and look at some of the other formats that you guys can play. Next up, we have the quick draft, the hour of devastation quick draft. Now, this is draft cards and build a 40 card deck to battle others. Draft mode uses special 14 card packs. You get to keep all the cards you choose. Keep playing until you reach seven wins or three losses. So you're going to be drafting. It's it's essentially a normal draft. If you guys are familiar with limited formats and, and specifically draft, this appears to be that sort of thing. So you're going to be drafting uh, two packs of Almond, or sorry, two packs of Our Devastation and one pack of Almond Cat. And you get, looks like, gems and packs for rewards, depending on how many wins you have. Now, this is currently locked. You're not able to join right now. And uh, you're not going to be able to join for 68 hours, 68 and a half hours. So maybe in 68 and a half hours, I'll do another video and we'll do one of these drafts. I believe these, though, cost, I uh, once again, I, I could be wrong, but I'm trying to, just going from memory, I think they cost either 5,000 gold or... I want to say like 1,000 gems or something. So there is an entry fee to do this sort of thing. And actually, you know what? I just checked online and the cost is going to be either 5,000 gold or 750 gems. So I was a little bit off there. I think I said 1,000 gems. Uh, it's actually 750. And the next thing we have here is Quick Constructed. Now, Quick Constructed is another sort of tournament that you can do within Magic Arena. Bring your competitive constructed deck and battle opponents and receive gold and cards based on how many wins you earn. Keep playing with that deck until you reach seven wins or three losses. Once again, you're going to be getting rewards of this one's specific, very specific as to what you get. You're going to get rewards of cards and gold. So it's going to go up depending on how many wins you have. This is going to cost you 95 gems or 500 gold. And then finally, the last type of play that is offered is just rank constructed. So you basically grab a deck, you play for free. This is how you can sort of gain your gold here and complete your objectives and so on and so forth. Now, at the end of this video, I will be doing one game of Rank Constructed. I will eventually be doing all the different types of gameplay they have here. The, the Flash Events, the Quick Draft, Hour of Devastation, and Quick Constructed. I'm, I'm intending to do all of those, and I will also be buying certain resources to sort of test out the storm. Storm? to test out the store, not to test out the storm, and to get some gems. Now, getting back to what gems are, I briefly sort of mentioned gems uh, when it came to the cost of certain things. Let's talk a little bit about what gems are and how you obtain them in the game. Okay, so like with a lot of these style of games, you do have a, a secondary currency, which in this case is gems that can be purchased in the store. So if we go to the store, you can see that there are various things you can purchase. You can purchase packs straight up if you want. You can purchase gems, and there's also the redeem codes. I don't have any codes, so I'm not going to redeem that. Now, we'll quickly go into the packs. It's basically just you get... Um, a certain number of packs for a certain amount of resources. You can get one pack for a thousand gold, so you don't necessarily have to spend gems to get more packs. But you can get three packs for 600 gems, six packs for 1,200, uh, 15 packs, and then a bonus uh, rare wild card. I'll talk about wild cards in a bit for 3,000. Then for 9,000, you get uh, 45 packs, a copy of Fire Song and Sun Speaker, which is sort of the buy a box promo in the physical cards that you can get. And it's going to include one mythic rare wild card, three rare wild cards, and nine uncommon wild cards. And then finally, for 18,000 uh, gems, you are going to get 90 packs. And this is going to include two copies of that promo card. 
and three mythic uh, wild cards, six rare wild cards, and 18 uncommon wild cards. Now, the gems themselves are something else you can buy in the store. And gems cost, for 750 gems, it's going to be $5. For 1600 uh, basically $10. For 3,400 gems, 20 9,200 gems is 50 and 20,000 gems is $99. So based on those prices for the gems, you know that a uh, the large sort of 90-pack uh, thing here is going to cost you just under $100 because it's 18,000 gems in order to buy the 90-packs and it is $99 for 20,000 gems. So you will still have 2,000 gems left over, but that seems I'm not going to be buying the uh, 20,000 gem pack. I am going to be purchasing at some point the $10 gem pack so I can play around with gems. Now, aside from buying the gems in the store, the only other way that I can find that you're possibly going to be able to generate gems is through the quick draft events, currently the hour devastation quick draft events. And that seems to be right now the only way that you can get more gems. Now, they, that may change in the future. I have no idea. I don't know what their plans are when it comes to how people can earn gems. I think for the most part, this is going to be how they're going to generate the revenue for uh, Magic Arena is specifically through you guys buying gems. Now, another thing to note, as you can see from the little star there, tax is not included. You can't see that because I'm actually in front of it. Um, but there is a symbol here. You know what? Just through the magic of editing, I'm going to move to the other side right now. So as you can see down here, taxes are not included in these. So you are going to pay taxes on this depending on where you live. I don't know what the tax rates are going to be, but um, but yeah. So keep that in mind as well, too, if you do end up investing in some of these gems. Now let's move back to the other corner because I like that other corner better. Okay, now in a couple seconds here, we're going to open up some packs. But before we do that, one last tab here that I want to discuss is the Dex tab. Now, right now, when you start Magic Arena, at least in the beta anyways, they do start you off with a collection. They give you a deck that corresponds with one of every type of two color combination you can possibly do in magic so as you can see here there's red green blue green white black black red so on and so forth so you do have the ability to immediately start up uh, right now in the beta like i said i don't know how this is going to change once it comes out of beta but if this is something that they're going to carry on in the regular version then you're going to immediately be able to load up magic arena and start playing with one of a variety of 10 different decks here. So I think that's nice. I think that's very useful instead of forcing people to immediately start buying packs and building up their collection. They at least give you something to start with. And some of these decks are quite good. Now, if you were playing Paper Magic, I don't think some of these decks would win you a Pro Tour. But for example, the Sun Empire deck, which is essentially a dinosaur deck, I thought is is quite strong. And it's it's the only thing I've been using. I, I've been testing out different decks on here, but it's the pretty much the only one I've been using as I've been trying to get my 15 wins to get all my objectives in this. So to show you what these decks are like and, and how you can sort of view what's inside, you just simply double click to edit them and it's gonna open up this menu. Now, this is gonna show you your card collection right now. These little diamonds here up above show you how many copies you have either in the inventory or in your deck. If they're in your deck, they show up as green diamonds. And if they're simply collected in your inventory, they show up as blue. And if you don't have a full play set, these diamonds are gonna show up as gray. Uh, another thing to mention right now before I get into the deck itself are the wild cards. Now these, as you can see, are color coded based on the various rarities in Magic. You got Mythic, you got Rare, Uncommon, and Common. These cards are gonna allow you to create a card of that rarity so when you earn a mythic one you get to create a mythic if you don't open up a mythic in a regular pack and there's one that you really want for your deck then this is the way that you can go about doing it so i will be showing you that in just a moment because there is definitely one mythic that i want to add to uh, one of my decks specifically the sun empire deck but i'm going to open up the packs first before that and see if i can get it sort of the old-fashioned way but moving on from this let's talk about the deck itself you can see here you have the deck and it is a 60 card deck. They also have a area for sideboards. Now, as of right now, all of the play styles in uh, Magic Arena are single game matches, not best two out of threes. So sideboards, which obviously are gonna come into effect at some point, have not been put into the game quite yet. This actually made me hopeful because there is something about having matchups which are only single games and you don't get to do that best two out of three, which is sort of disheartening because you can have just a simply a bad opening hand and it makes you feel like, what's the point of being continuing to play? 
because I'm not going to win this one and there's no other matches which I can or no other games which I can redeem myself in this match. So I'm glad to see that side the sideboard tab is there, which means that in the future uh, Magic Arena is going to have best two out of three matches. At least that's what I'm guessing anyways. So talking about the deck itself, you have all the cards from the deck listed here. And then in the corner here, you see that this tells you the number of cards that you have of our number of that particular card that you have so obviously you can add more cards of like the the drover of the mighty if you want to um and you just scroll down and you can see all the various cards you have and your land as well too so you got the, your land base here mountains 10 forests uh the oasis timber gorge and unclaimed territory so it's ordered in um when it shows you the list here it's going to be ordered by your converted mana cost and down here at the very end, it's going to be your mana base. Now, this Empire, uh, the Sun Empire, I think I mentioned before, is the deck that I've been playing mostly when I've been playing uh, Magic Arena. And it's been doing quite well for me, but I do want to try to improve it. So we are probably going to be doing a bit of that before the end of the video, before I actually show you some gameplay. And in order to improve it, I need to get more cards. Now, once again, the, the way to get new cards is either using these uh, wild cards or to open packs which is what we're gonna do right now and I'm super excited about this because I haven't opened a single pack in Magic Arena yet I've been waiting for you guys so we're gonna open up packs and I'm gonna show you and we're both gonna experience together what that's like on Magic Arena so here we are in the packs tab of Magic Arena I put my earbuds in because I wanted to hear if there was some sort of sound effects that accompany opening up packs now as you can see here before we crack them open the current sets in Magic Arena only go back to Amonkhet now currently in standard as of this recording uh, Aether Revolt and Kaladesh are two sets that are part of the, the standard uh, legal cards. They're not included in Magic Arena yet. I'm guessing, and once again, I don't know this for sure, I'm guessing that is because they're going to be rotating out in a few months anyways. So that's possibly an indicator that Magic Arena won't be going um, out of beta until after they rotate out. So putting them in as an asset in the game right now might not be the best use of their time possibly that's what they're thinking so if you're hoping for those sets to be included in magic arena if you're currently in the beta probably wouldn't hold my breath because i don't necessarily know whether or not they're going to be put in it would sort of make sense that uh eventually older sets would be included in magic arena but as for right now i can see why they might want to keep everything standard legal and even though kaladesh and aether revolt are currently in standard they probably won't be when this comes out of beta once again this is all speculation on my part i don't have any insider information so this is all just sort of guesswork uh, as far as i'm concerned now one thing i do want to mention when it comes to opening packs is you see this little treasure chest up here this is a vault progress meter now it can th this vault apparently contains one mythic rare wild card two rare wild cards and three uncommon wild cards unlock the vault by opening packs and collecting cards so this, once again, is something I haven't been able to experience because I haven't opened any packs and I collected any new cards. Now, that's enough talking about opening up packs. Let's actually open up these packs and see what's inside. Now, I do know for a fact that these packs don't have 15 cards like a regular pack. I think they've got seven. Let's, let's open up and find out. So we click on it. Okay. So they have eight cards in them um including which i'm guessing this is going to be the rare card the rare to mythic card in it so it, it did have a nice little bit of sort of sound effects which is kind of nice a little bit of uh visual effects as well too i'm not going to talk about each of the individual cards that we have in these packs if there's one that catches my eye i may sort of uh mention what they are but right now i'm pretty much just going to be focusing on the rare and uh, uncommon so as far as uncommons go we have ruthless sniper and then we have one uncommon wild card. Now I'm guessing the wild card including these packs is going to be random, though there is definitely probably a percentage of um, versus like uncommons are really going to show up more often than wild cards for mythics, for example. So let's see what a rare is. And it is Dispossess, which is weirdly, I think the very first rare I opened up with Amonkhet in paper magic as well too so i don't know why this card follows me around so much so dispossess two and one black it's a sorcery choose an artifact card name search target opponent's graveyard hand and library for any number of cards with the chosen name and exile them then that player shuffles their library so how did this okay so our vault vault progress has gone up to 3.3 percent so now we're going to go ahead and click on the next card for the next pack of almond Ket here um, nothing super excited. We do have Destined to Lead as our uncommon. And 
another split card onward victory okay so you do not you're not guaranteed a wild card in every pack that's something i'm just learning now so um nothing else here that i'm, I'm super super interested in let's go ahead and find out what our rare card is and it is shadow of the grave an instant return to your hand all cards in your graveyard that you cycled or discarded this turn okay so moving on oops moving on we're going to open up the final pack of Omniket. we did start off when you do start off with magic arena at least in the beta they give you three of each type of pack i have since gained three more dominaria packs that's why there's six there let's continue on and open up the third pack of Omniket. so we did get a wild card this time which is great uh our uncommon is weaver of currents and that is the only uncommon right i'm not misspeaking here i might know it seems to be it and our rare card is commit uh commit to memory sorry so the commit side is an instant put target spell or non-land permanent into its owner's library second from the top memory the aftermath for four and two blue you get a sorcery aftermath each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library and then draws seven cards not the sexiest uh, rare card that you could expect or hope for when it comes to Amonkhet. But anyways, moving on to the Hour of Devastation packs. So we have, okay, so we have two uncommons here. So if it's not going to be a wild card, you're going to get two uncommons, a rare or mythic. And then I guess you have the potential of getting a wild card anywhere within the pack, which is kind of nice. So uh, we have Torment of Scarabs and Supreme Well. Supreme Well is a card I quite like. I don't know if we already have one. I think we have at least a couple of these already in our collection, which is fine. And then our rare card is, oh, Champion of Wits. This is another card, which actually isn't bad to get another copy of. So Champion of Wits, two and one blue. It's a Naga Wizard, uh, two, one. And when it enters the battlefield, you may draw cards equal to its power. If you do, discard two cards. It also has Eternalize. Eternalize, exile this card from your graveyard, create a token as a copy of it, except it's a 4-4 black zombie with no mana cost. Eternalize only as a sorcery. So there we go, our next Hour of Devastation pack. What will it reveal? Uh, so our uncommons are Magmaroth and Devotee of Strength. We did not get a wild card, which is unfortunate, but we did get a rare, of course, and it is a rare wild card. This is actually better, <laughs> as you can tell, than getting just a random rare card, because this allows you to choose specifically from the entire collection not just of this particular set um hour of devastation it allow you to choose any rare card so i'm i'll be more than happy if if every third fourth uh rare card ends up being a wild card so that's kind of cool and now that i'm done my off-camera coughing fit let's move on to the last pack of hour of devastation and here we have okay so we get another wild card great we have eternal of harsh truth this is actually a card i quite like and vizier of the anointed that's the correct pronunciation, right? Vizier? I believe so. And uh, we have as our rare Hour of Eternity. So XX and three blue gets you a sorcery. Exile X target creature cards from your graveyard. For each card exiled this way, create a token that's a copy of that card, except it's a 4-4 black zombie. These are actually the types of, of interesting little goofy, well, I consider them goofy cards that I love trying to build decks around. When I play Magic typically on my own, I, I don't, I'm not super, super uh, into like, crazy competitive decks i do like to create sort of like fun goofy decks that that have interesting combos and stuff just to amuse myself they don't often win but when they do it's super entertaining so that is the last pack of hour of devastation let's see what our vault progress is at it's at 20 percent, and that's after opening up six packs so to get to 100 percent in theory we would need to open up 30 packs now we don't have 30 packs we have 12 left but uh in the future we could probably reach that number so we're going to go ahead and move on to Ixalan and start opening up the packs there. See what we got. Come on. Big money, big money. Oh, we got another wild card uncommon. Um, not super, super important to get uncommon wild cards. Obviously, we're, we've got quite a few of them, but still, I'll take any sort of wild card. And uh, Navigator's Ruin is the other uncommon that we have here. And our rare is... Herald of Secret Streams. For three and one blue, you get a two, three Merfolk Warrior. Creatures you control with plus one, plus one counters on them can't be blocked. Then we move on to the next Ixalan pack. So we have Siren Storm Tamer and Steadfast Armasaur. Once again, I'm, I'm not a big dinosaur guy, so uh, I, I screw up the names of these dinosaurs all the time. And uh, in the comment section, people have pointed it out. So thank you. 
And we have either a rare or a mythic, and it is a mythic, our first mythic from these packs, and it is Waking Sun's avatar for five and three white. You get a 7-7 seven, seven dinosaur avatar. When it enters the battlefield, if you cast it from your hand, destroy all non-dinosaur creatures. So it's a creature wrapped up in a wrath effect, which I quite like. I love I love wrath of God Wrath of Wrath of God effects. I love Wrath of God effects. There we go. Speaking the English good. So here we are, we've got Drover of the Mighty and Imperial Lancer as our uncommons, and our rare is... It's a wild card. Excellent. Good, good, good. I'm super happy about that. And we're now at 30%. Okay. Okay, so there is definitely... A, a, ten, is it 10% per three packs? I guess that's. I guess it's going to be pretty consistent. I We did open a Mythic. So I was kind of curious if that would change if we by opening a mythic, but apparently not. So, whatever. We're going to continue on with our Rivals of Ixalan packs. Here we have a Uncommon Wildcard, Forerunner of the Empire. Now, I've already got at least two copies of this, I think, in the Dinosaur deck. But this is definitely something that could help the Dinosaur deck uh, in the future. So our rare card is... Another Dinosaur. Ooh, the Primal Hunger. Ten and two green for the 1212 elder dinosaur it costs x less to cast where x is the total power of creatures you control and it has trample so this might be something that goes in the dinosaur deck as well too okay any weird edits you may see uh in the video by the way are going to be brought to you by coughing fits which i seem to be getting constantly now that i'm on camera so our next pack of rivals of ixalan is gives us a, uh, uh, sorry, a common wild card. Was that a common wild card? I think I might have misspoke before, because I remember the one being down here, but I thought it was uncommon. But it's entirely possible it was a common wild card, and I just wasn't paying attention. So we have Pitiless Plunder and Sky Marcher Aspirant as our uncommons, and our rare card is another rare wild card. I do love these wild cards. I like the idea of this, these wild cards, because... They, they make it more flexible when it comes to trying to build your collection up and specifically create certain decks. So moving on, we have the final Rivals of Ixalan pack. And inside we find a Forsaken Sanctuary and an Ethereal Flow, which is a pretty gruesome looking uh, card there. So we're going to move on and see what our rare is. And it is a Radiant Destiny. It's an enchantment for two and one white. It has a send. As Radiant Destiny enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one, plus one, as long as you have the City's Blessing. They also have Vigilance. Now, in order to get the City's Blessing through Ascending, if you control ten or more permanents, you get the City's Blessing for the rest of the game. So you just basically get the rest. Rest. You have to race your opponent to ten permanents in order to get that Blessing. Now, let's move on to the Dominaria packs. The newest set for Magic the Gathering. As of this recording, anyways. So we have Seal Away, which is a great bit of removal. And we have Dampening Spear as our uncommons. And our rare card is... Ooh, it's a Mythic, and it's Phyrexian Scriptures for two and two black. It's an enchantment saga. And I say saga because in one video, I mispronounced saga. And for whatever reason, even though I know how to say saga, I referred to it as saga in the comments section went to bonkers so there you go folks it is an enchantment saga put a plus one plus one counter and up to two sorry <laughs> i'll try reading this better put a plus one plus one counter on up to one target creature that creature becomes an artifact in addition to its other types the second act is destroy all non-artifact non creatures i'm going to get through this card even if it kills me and the third act is exile all cards from all opponents graveyards so that's pretty good got a mythic can't, can't complain about getting a mythic. Only thing better would be one of the mythic wild cards. Speaking of wild cards, we do have an uncommon wild card. We have a copy of Opt. I love, I love me some Opt. Uh, we also have Sanctum Spirit as our other uncommon. And our rare slash mythic is another saga. It is Fall of Thran, and its first act is destroy all lands. Its second and third act is each player returns two lands from their graveyard to the battlefield. I had an opponent play this against me. Um, I, I'm a white blue player, so I can't complain about someone playing this particular type of card. Pain in the ass though. Pain in the ass when it gets played against you in certain games. And moving on, we have, I almost forgot that we have six packs of Dominaria, so this is great. Ooh, two wild cards. So now the more I think about it, that must have been, in an earlier pack, that must have been an, uh, a common wild card and I just misread it. So we have a common wild card, an uncommon wild card, 
and a Knight of Grace. Our rare, is our rare mythic gonna be a wild card? No, it's not. It's gonna be Tishar, Ancestor's Apostle. It is a 2-2 bird cleric flying whenever you cast a historic spell, return target creature card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Historic, by the way, is a legendary artifact or saga enchantment card and flying, I think we, I think we all know what flying is. Okay, so we have Board the Weatherlight and Danitha, 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 Caption, Paragon as our other uncommon. Don't judge me. Uh, and our, ooh, and we get a rare wild, I mean, I'd much prefer a mythic wild card, but I do, I do like getting these rare wild cards. So it's going to allow us to pick and choose what we're going to add to our dinosaur deck. Once again, that's probably going to be the one that I'm going to try to improve. We have Halar the Fire Fletcher as one of our uncommons and Fire Fist Adept as the other uncommon. And our rare card is Karn's Temporal Sundering. For four and two blue, you get a legendary sorcery. Target player takes an extra turn after this one. Return up to one target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Exile Karn's Temporal Sundering once you've cast it. It's a legendary sorcery. That's right. I don't, didn't think I pointed it out before. I might have. I'm not sure. But uh, you can cast a legendary sorcery only if you control a legendary creature or planeswalker. And the final pack of Dominary that we have in our collection gives us an Icy Manipulator and a Dauntless Bodyguard as our uncommons. Anything else interesting here in the... No, not really. And our rare is Tempest Jin, which is for three blue, you get a 0-4 Jin creature. It's got flying and it gets plus one, plus zero for each basic island you control. So not the worst card ever. Um, not the best card ever either, but still, I'll take it. Now, what is our progress at? We're at 60... We're at 60.3%. Just when you think you have these things figured out, they decided to throw a weird 0.3% in there for you. So um, we are close, but not quite. So I think this means that we had, if our calculations, we have to open up 12 packs more. Yes, I think that's right. So 12 packs more, and we're going to be able to get um, into our vault. And that's going to give us, once again, a mythic, uh, one mythic, two rare, and three uncommon wild cards. I'm looking forward to that. So now that we've opened up our packs and we got a few more wild cards, let's try to improve the current dinosaur deck here on magic arena and then we're going to get to a game and there's definitely one uh, mythic wild card that i'm going to be using in order to create one of the dinosaurs that i definitely want in this deck which will also i think be useful in other decks that i may create in the future i'll show you what that is right now okay so here we are in the sun empire deck which is the as i mentioned before the red green dinosaur deck that i'm going to be adding at least a couple cards to tweaking a little uh, a couple things i don't want to spend a whole lot of time messing with the deck right now i want to get into the gameplay video or gameplay a uh, part of this video for you guys soon but uh, i do want to add at least a couple of cards and maybe move a couple cards in and out of the deck so the first card that i want to add let me just double check to make sure it's not here no it does not seem to be in the collection we'll go to this tab here which allows us to do advanced filters and we're going to click the unowned and see uh and then get how do we get there we go Oh, there he is, Carnage Tyrant. Now, as you can see here, all these are grayed out, which means they're not in the collection. And uh, I do want to add me a Carnage Tyrant to this deck because I just think it's a <laughs> it's a great card. Not only for this deck, but there are other decks I know I want to create that will use this card. Now, for those of you unfamiliar, Carnage Tyrant is a six drop, four and two green gets you a seven, six dinosaur. It can't be countered and it has trample and hexproof. It's a wonderful card to add to any dinosaur deck and it's also going to give me the uh, chance to use a mythic rare wild card and uh, see how you go about creating it so you click on it double click on it ah okay so what you have to do is you have to search for the card <laughs> and then uh it gives you the option to redeem the wild card for it okay now there there are definitely some of you out there who are probably screaming at the screen that i should be using this to create something different something other than the Carnage Tyrant. I 100% I agree with you. If this was paper magic, real world magic, I would, and I had the magical ability to create any mythic I wanted in the current standard environment, I probably wouldn't create Carnage Tyrant, even though it's still a really great card. However, because I'm playing mostly with this dinosaur deck, this is the one that I'm gonna be testing out 
the mythic wild card with and also keep in mind this is also in beta which means that at certain points there are going to be wipes to the collection so this is not going to stay with me forever i do get to sort of take back this choice at a future date but let's go ahead and create this carnage tyrant because i haven't seen it done so let's see uh what it looks like confirm Ooh, and it gives a little dinosaur scream as well too so let's, let's figure out what we're going to take out and put the carnage tyrant into this deck okay so now i realize putting in a card with a six converted mana cost and taking out a card with three is going to sort of slightly mess up our curve but the frilled death spitter is not a card which i've been i found to be very useful in this deck so we're going to take this out can we just simply drag i'm curious can we just drag it like this oh so you can do that i'm sure you can also oh so you can just immediately create if you don't have it you can either add it or so let's okay so that's interesting as well too okay so you do have the option of either to add cards if you have them in your collection for example you uh, an extra copy in your collection you can click on this and it's going to either just add another card or if you don't have it it's automatically going to allow you to redeem some of the wild cards now we actually have uh quite a few of the we have eight uncommon wild cards now an, one card that i definitely do want to add more of is the forerunner of the empire so that's been very useful so i'm going to go ahead and add oh so i already have an extra copy of it so there we go and then all right so there you got to see that it automatically adds a card from your collection into the deck if you already have a copy of it and if you don't then it's going to bring you to the screen here which is going to allow you to create one so we're just going to go ahead and create one i don't necessarily know if i'm going to be using this or keeping it this way but i do like having four in this deck so i'm going to do a bit more tweaking with this deck and then once i've sort of figured out what i've uh wanted to add and everything i will bring you guys back and you guys can see just basically what i've done to this deck to sort of help hopefully help improve it and not destroy it okay so i've sort of tweaked the deck a bit i've definitely got more work to do on it but I, for now for the for the sake of this example for this video i think we're okay i did want to mention that i was considering putting in uh, up to three or four copies of lanoir elves into the deck because it's such a great ramp card however because one of the things that i wanted to stay focused on with this deck was the enrage ability where if one of your creatures takes damage um, a certain effect happens that i I left them out because of cards like Shake the Foundations and creatures like the Raging Sword Tooth. So if I if I end up moving away from Enrage as one of the the mechanics that I like in this deck and just go for more of a straight stompy dinosaur build, then Land of War Elves would almost definitely go back in because there's there's such good ramp. But for now, um, I've tweaked the deck a bit. I've added a uh, an extra copy of a braid i took out the lightning strike because a braid basically does the same thing but it has an extra effect i've added in talonelli's crown which is going to help with enrage so um when it enters the battlefield it deals one damage to enchanted creature enchanted creature gets plus three plus zero and has trample that's very important trample i think with this deck is going to work really well added a, a couple extra copies or one extra one i can't remember if it was one or two extra copies of drover the mighty i think the deck had two to start with and i took out some of the other rampy creatures that didn't uh, have any effects with dinosaurs so there was that and then beyond that i ended up taking out uh, i left in samet voice of descent it's not a dinosaur but it's it's can be such a powerful card i think that it, it definitely wanted to stay in this deck um i added an extra copy did i add an extra copy of uh yeah forerunner of the empire uh i i kept in there because it's, it's great obviously with dinosaurs now, this is where I may be screwing up my curve because I added an extra copy of the uh, Itali Primal Storm and Burning Sun's Avatar because both of these cards have won me so many games in the past, but there's only one card in of each in this deck. Of course, we have the Carnage Tyrant, which I added at the very beginning. So yeah, I, I did some tweaking. It's, it's obviously not the strongest, but once again, I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time doing that. I wanted to get into the gameplay aspect of this video and sort of finish off this video with that. So let's get to that without any further ado and you guys can see what the gameplay looks like in magic arena okay so our opening hand is uh it's not super great but it's not the worst i'm actually going to keep it um we only have like you know a couple two cost creatures i'm going to go ahead and play out the timber gorge first because it comes into play tapped so as you can see here it, it'll sort of fade out the card and then put the little tap symbol on it i would almost prefer a slightly you know more pronounced tap to the cards but it is what it is it's not that big of a deal uh, i'm gonna do an unclaimed territory and then mark it for dinosaurs so opponents on white so far um i doubt they're gonna be mono white oh, okay 
That's fine. That's absolutely fine. Let's go ahead and do this and put out this. Now, this has double strike, right? So this is going to be really great against something that hasn't raged, if I'm actually able to... Uh, I doubt he's going to swing in with it. Okay. Vampires. It's fine. This is fine. We have a lot of stuff that's going to be able to do one damage to, uh, to all of his creatures. So... I think part of me wants to just swing in here. I can play a forest. And yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna or do I hold up to get more land? I don't need more land, so I just I think I'm just gonna swing in. He doesn't really have any favorable blocks. I mean he could triple block if he wanted to, but I'm just gonna get a bunch of land from that, so. Losing my voice here, folks. Um I'm just gonna do the forerunner. Because this is going to allow me to bring out dinosaurs and deal one damage to all the... And wipe out their board, essentially. So we're going to take action. And let's go ahead and... Um, you know what? I want, I want the Primal Storm. I want to bring the Primal Storm up. I'm not going to be able to cast it quite yet, but... I'm getting close. I'm getting close. Next turn, I'll be able to do, do the Needle Tooth Raptor, which is great. So even if you put something that's bigger than a 1-1 one, one on the board, like that... Uh, needle Tooth Raptor is going to do some amazing work for us. Greatest power. Okay, that's fine. So we'll actually probably, yeah, use that for there instead. So, um, so no, yeah, he's going to swing in. We're, we're still okay. We're doing okay here. So we're going to choose blockers. We're going to choose no blockers. And then our Needle Tooth Raptor is going to be able to do a lot of work for us. So we're going to play a forest. And I'm going to go ahead and Needle Tooth Raptor. That's going to trigger the Forerunner of the Empire. Take action. Wipe out those. Needle Tooth Raptor's gonna ability is gonna trigger. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on that. Uh, take action. Uh, let's put a. We need a mountain, so let's put a mountain out there. And then I'm just gonna attack with the Raptors here. So yeah, that worked out quite well. And then the following turn, we can either do a charging. Uh, Monstrosaur, or we can do the uh, Primal Storm. We're probably going to do the Primal Storm. Yeah, no blockers here. Not going to block. Okay, so we're going to be able to take out this, this turn. Uh, it's just a matter, I think we're going to do this because it does have haste. So let's go ahead and just bring this out. Uh, take action. Triggers, and then we are going to yeah take action. So first we're going to put a I'll put another mountain out there, and then we're going to attack with everything. They're tapped out, so we don't have to worry about settle the wreckage or things like that. So we're just going to do a boatload of damage to them. Oh, I forgot this is this is oh he untapped it. That's right. That was silly of me, folks. That was silly. That was definitely silly of me. I, for whatever reason, I thought because it, it attacked, it was it was tapped, but I forgot he can untap it. Okay, it shouldn't be the end of the world, but it was a very, very dumb move on my part. So now this has flying for a strike and lifelink. He's going to internalize that. So that might that potentially cost me the game. That silly little um, not paying attention. That's also one of the reasons why I don't. I mean, I know it's grayed out. I wish they would turn... I'm so used to them being turned way more sideways. Uh, as it turns out, none of this really matters. Um, so we can shake the foundation. Let's see, if we shake the foundation... Because this has got double strike, correct? It's the other thing. It, sometimes... Okay, internalize and double strike. So, yeah, we're going to shake the foundation. And deal the damage to that. Take action. Bring out... Uh, this time we'll bring out a forest. Why not? And then combat, we should be able to... I mean, he can block either of those, so we could... I mean, we, I could swing in with just both of these. And then we'll take that out anyways. I think I'm just going to go ahead and combat and swing in just with this. Be smart about it this time. So he could block, gain two life, but this would definitely die still. So you may want to keep it up. Okay. And then we're going to bring out the Primal Storm. 
Now, if our opponent has settled the wreckage, we can expect him to hold up <laughs> at least four of his mana. Um, okay, this is fine. He's probably going to go for the Needle Raptor, the, the Needle Tooth Raptor, isn't he? It would make... No, he's not. Okay. I would have gone for this myself, because then I could just take that back if I have anything that can do one damage, but... And he is tapped out, so we don't have to worry about uh, Settle the Wreckage. Uh, so we do have another Needle Tooth Raptor. So if I swing in... Yeah, so let's move the combat. And swing in with the Needle Tooth Raptor and that. Yeah, so four, one. I might have wanted to swing in with everything. I don't really have to. Um, and then I can bring out another one of the Needle Tooth Raptors. I'm going to hold this back so he doesn't know I have it. But chances are we've won this. He's at one life. I mean, it's entirely possible he could he could pull some sort of shenanigans. Once again, if he has settled the wreckage, we can expect him to hold up four. So... But if I have anything that can... That can uh, trigger the enrage for the needle tooth raptors then we've pretty much won the game i do feel silly about making that so there we go so we won the game so that's sort of the gameplay how the gameplay works in magic arena uh as you can see here all of a sudden it updates all your little objectives here we got a win so it's going to give us 250 gold as well too and you just go ahead and claim it and then you can continue on doing that until you've claimed all your rewards for that uh, particular time period. So there you guys go. That is a bit of the gameplay when it comes to Magic Arena. Now, before I close off the video, my overall thoughts so far with Magic Arena based on everything that I've shown you and everything that I've seen, I, I quite like it. It's There's definitely room for improvement when it comes to this game, but I think they have those a lot of those areas which I think could be improved already sort of, they're already targeting them for the future. One example, is the uh in the decks area you did see that tab for 15 card sideboard which means that they are going to be introducing that in the future i'm guessing which also means they're going to be going towards best two out of three matches instead of single matches which in magic can be you know doesn't ne necessarily give you the best gameplay experience a lot of the time i mean sometimes you just want to play a quick game of magic and be done with it other times when it comes to more competitive gameplay you definitely want that best two out of three match so that's something they seem to be that the, they, they seem to have already considered and will be adding in the future but uh yeah overall um i i do enjoy the experience i like the feel of the gameplay uh one thing you didn't get to see is that certain cards have like really crazy animations that will sort of pop up um some of them some of them look good some of them look a little cheesy like they could use a bit of work uh when you play a planeswalker the planeswalker usually says something so there's there's a lot of sort of like flash to it that i i think is quite nice i haven't seen anything yet that, that i find super annoying um but yeah in, in the future i will be doing different styles of gameplay for magic arena in in these videos i'll be doing the quick drafts the flash events um the flash events i think i said flashed events the flash events as well as the quick constructed and also more ranked play i'm also eventually going to invest in some gems just so i can have the experience of of seeing what their how their store works and also being able to use the gems in order to enter some of these particular events and possibly buy some packs or something like that so so yeah there's definitely be more magic arena videos in the future but uh hopefully you guys enjoyed this sort of initial overview for the various aspects of this game if you have any questions or comments or if you if you've been able to get into the beta yourself and you want to share some of your experiences please leave that in the comments section below you can also follow and contact me on twitter at brain pulp tv but now with all that said thank you guys so much for watching like and subscribing doing everything you guys do to help support the channel it means a lot to me hope you guys have a wonderful day night morning evening whatever it is wherever you are may all your pulls be mythics and i'll see you all again very soon